have a battle in the heavyweight division. Sony X95L versus the Hisense UX, 85 inches up next. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Brian. This is Tech Therapy. Thank you so much for joining me for this comparison of the Hisense UX at 85 inches versus the Sony X95L, also 85 inches. This was filmed at the Value Electronics King of TV shootout in 2023. This was at the tail end of the competition. I regrettably want to spend much more time with these TVs, get more of them on camera as setting these two monsters up next to each other is rather difficult. As you're seeing me go through the presets, try to match them up as closely as I can with what little time we had. At the end of the video, I'll also have a talking portion with Stop the FOMO, who saw these two TVs together for the very first time, so we'll have some more deep dive analysis at the end part of this video. Special thank you to Value Electronics for providing both the Hisense UX and the Sony X95L. Please consider making your next AV purchase through them. Check the description below for all their information. Let them know that Brian at Brian's Tech Therapy sent you. So we had an amazing competition up in New York uh, last weekend where the Sony A95L Master Series was the 4K winner. Uh, the TVs were at 65 inches, so the X95L was not able to compete. The UAK from Hisense did compete. If the X95L was at 65 inches, it would have competed. However, I will tell you by that competition, the OLEDs were far and away much better than any of the mini LEDs that were present. However, that said, at 85 inches and up, especially with the panels of this quality is where I think a mini LED will thrive and live for years to come. 85 up, 100 inch, 98 inch. In my opinion, the X95L is the best all around mini LED produced this year and perhaps the best all around LED of any kind produced from Sony. That includes the legendary Z9D and recent Z9K. Why I say this is the X95L, while not as bright as the Z9G or Z9K, has a much better control. It's much more subtle. Its blooming is much better. And while it still reaches about 2000 nits, it has incredible balance, as well as the XR Clear, which is new for this year. The Hisense UX is the new kid on the block in this category, meaning its flagship this year is actually the U8K Mini LED. They had Mini LED throughout their lineup, the U6, U7, and U8K. However, the UX for me is their true flagship, and it is a sign of things to come as it goes against the X95L, which is the 4K flagship for the Mini LEDs. Now, for me, the fact that the UX in this regard has caught up in some degree to the X95 and even surpassed it in this comparison is shocking. However, they've been at it a very, very long time, and it's not surprising as you see filmmaker mode on the left of the Hisense, super dark until we disable the ambient mode settings. Now, we try to compare these TVs as closely as we can, and we do a fair deal with it. They are both absolutely amazing sony x95l again very well rounded the upscaling this year from sony is on another level something the hisense is not going to be able to match you won't see that here as we use the spears and munsell uh, calibration disc which is of the highest quality in terms of 4k hdr now you'll see me wandering in and out of the presets you'll see that more than i can describe it here but you'll see in a lot of these shots the depth that the Hisense is actually bringing. You'll see this better in the blooming scenes where both control the blooming amazingly. Keep in mind that the UX has 5,000 dimming zones. Sony does not disclose their dimming zone amount. The Hisense is 2,500 nits. The Sony's about 2,000 as you see here in this shot. The blooming control is the same. However, the Hisense has a much brighter image within the image. 
Now, out of the natural preset or the filmmaker presets or custom presets, the Hisense is automatically more rich and has more saturation. Now, you can take the accuracy a bit and get rid of it to some degree, though the colors match up pretty well. Now, I'm not sure if these have both been calibrated. I think they may have been calibrated, but we aren't in the calibrated presets. There was no judging of this part of the competition. But they do match up surprisingly well. For the X95L to be one of the best LEDs they've ever released and have the Hisense UX hanging right there with it is actually amazing. Now keep in mind the UX is not a bargain TV. It is about $5,000 where the X95L is $4,500. What I love about the UX is for me, it's a sign of where they're going, what you'll see next year. This TV can be bought, you can buy it at Value Electronics, but it is rare, there aren't that many made. So for me, it's more of an exploratory, experimental uh, project in a way. Next year, you'll see the UXL, you'll see it reach 4,000 nits, and who knows about the zone count. The crazy thing about Sony is able to have this kind of light control with less zones. Their algorithm and their processing is on another planet. They have separated themselves yet again this year. That little thing you see in the corner of the X95L is just the label. There is not a film over the screen. But you can see how in these scenes, there isn't any blooming on the UX, 5,000 zones, but the inside image is very bright. And in every preset, other than Filmmaker, the Hisense was much brighter and much more accurate. I shouldn't say accurate, much more saturated, where the Sony was more accurate, excuse me. Again, in a few minutes, FOMO and I will break down what we saw. But I think they look amazing, and here we are. Thank you guys for watching. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Brian. This is Tech Therapy. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm here with special guest, Stop the FOMO. FOMO I'm not up, special. My hey, man. You are special. <laughs> uh, what I want to discuss today is at the end of our Value Electronics 2023 King of Show uh, shootout coverage, we actually did tack on one extra portion, which was the X95L versus the Hisense UX, both at 85 inches. Now, I regrettably, we both regrettably didn't have a chance to spend enough time with both these TVs. It was the end of the event. The AK event went on for a very long time. But I really wanted to have you on to discuss your thoughts on the UX since you hadn't had a chance to see it. I had seen them both not quite side by side, so I was surprised with the results. But I really want to know what you think. And also, you hadn't had a chance to really see the X95L either. What were your thoughts overall? So uh, I was so impressed that the UX performed so well next to X95L. The only difference I saw, now we're talking Spears and Muscle. We didn't do streaming, which I wish we had a chance to. Yeah. On the Spears and Muscle, the UX consistently kept up with the X95L in terms of contrast, sometimes beating it, blooming control, black levels, all of that. UX nailed it, but color differences, I thought, I think maybe neither of them were calibrated, but then Jason Dustel might have snuck in and calibrated, but either way, yeah. it felt like the UX was a touch more saturated in color. Yes. The Sony was a little bit less saturated. Now, who knows if it's correct or not? So most consumers who buy the UX are not going to calibrate it, so they're not going to care. I think it's close enough. And the best description is the UX is hyper-realistic. And the Sony is honest. And you look at that, you're like, you know what? Most consumers will go with hyper-realistic. Yeah. And most purists will go with honest. And, and we're taking, again, streaming out of the equation. And I think UX made the right decision. It's taking up the torch that Samsung used to have a reputation for, which is hyper-real, mm -hmm. vibrant pop, right? Yeah. And I, I was impressed mm -hmm. by the UX. It did not disappoint. Well, at the same uh, same line of, I guess, thinking or, or way we're thinking is that surprisingly, the X95L's blooming control was also right there, considering the uh -huh. UX has 5,000 nits. Yes, yes. Or 5,000 zones, I should say. Um, but what I thought the UX did very well, especially in that honey scene, was that it had the same level of light control and local dimming, 
but the honey spot itself was very, very bright. Now, the UX is 2,500 nits. I believe the X95 is 2,000 nits. Max is out around there. They both looked very good, but I was shocked at how well the UX performed. Now, trying to put them FOMO in similar presets was difficult. Mm -hmm. um, you had mentioned that putting them in Dolby Vision. Tell me a little bit about when we went back in and changed the, um, the HDR to Dolby Vision. So we started off with the, the source was Dolby Vision 10,000 nits. Both were put in their Dolby Vision accurate mode, Dolby Vision dark. They looked very similar. Uh, at yeah. the end of the day, the colors were more similar. I thought the, the white point looked very similar, and that's what Dolby Vision does. But the UX, to me, it felt like it had deeper blacks. Now, is it a result of 5,000 nits, or is it crushing the blacks? That's a whole different zones. discussion, yep. right? The I zone, mean, sorry, yep. 5,000 zones, right. Because we didn't have a reference monitor. And again, you know, the 32-inch reference monitor against the 85-inch, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, you're not getting this TV for reference. Yep. But... It just felt to me that the impact of the UX was that it just had a wider dynamic range because of that deeper black. And so the UX succeeded in impressing me in that way. And what also impressed me, and we spoke uh, in yesterday's video about how badly the LEDs performed against the OLED. Yeah. It did show that at 85 inches, having the LEDs alone was key. Neither one of them ever looked washed out. Neither one of them looked faded. Now they were all premium, but in the 8K shootout, the 900C and the Z9K are also premium. It really does show that I think LEDs alone, I didn't notice either one of them struggling. They both seemed amazing. Um, it would have been nice to see the Q195C there as well. But the UX, the price point, does that bother you being that it is right now more expensive oh. than the X95 though? I cannot recommend it on, on price. And not because it's a high sense, right? But because... For that price, the Sony also delivers, or even for less, right? For four thousand, a little over four thousand, yeah. Sony delivers just amazing image processing and upscaling of all sources, not just the best source. On the best source, they're very close. On lesser sources, Sony has proven this year with XR Clear, and on the X90L, right? I noticed it, nailed it. So yeah. I know the X95L will do at least as well, which is very impressive. And the UX, Hisense is not focused on that. They're still focused on high quality content, just great blooming control, great contrast, yeah. some color accuracy, image processing of a little bit of content. That's for maybe next year or the year after. I mean, these things don't come overnight. Yeah. Sony already got the color accuracy. Yeah. Then they got this. Then now they're working on the upscaling imaging to the next level, right? So it took them years to layer this all on. And Hisense is moving fast, but, yeah. you know, maybe another few years. I mean, what was it Rob Brennan told you about Hisense? Well, he well he mentioned that there was, you know, mentioned that even the competitors many years ago weren't on the same planet. Then they weren't on the same sport. Then all of a sudden they're on the field and they're right behind you. So they are moving very quickly and their budgets or their, their uh, yeah, their budgets and what they're allowed. Their war chests are much different. TCL and Heists do sell a lot. They have more money than you think. The, the war chest is there. there. Yeah. Yeah. But so did you, did you think about, um, so quickly before we get into the design, once we got out of Dolby Vision and we jumped the presets, meaning we stayed, it was Filmmaker versus, I filmmaker. think, custom, Filmmaker custom, versus yeah. Custom. Right. And the Filmmaker was very dark on the Heists. Once we unleashed it and put it in the other presets, it was vibrant in every other preset. Yes, it's well, it just felt a little bit more saturated. And again, we're not talking accuracy. Yep. This is the Samsung thing. Yep. And consistently, everyone who was there, me, Iceman, you, the other the people who were attending and saw the other shootouts. No judges. They were just kind no of judges. Out. They were yep. just like the UX is impressive. And the highs, and then the Sony feels like it's subtle, cinematic, yeah. honest, natural. Or, or, yeah. natural, whatever that yeah. means. Yep. I would get the Hisense for my family. Okay. If this is the content I'm watching, I would be very comfortable with them watching that. I know they would like it. Yeah. My, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I like it. I thought it was very impressive. I mean, okay. The Sony A95L, that's what it looks like to me. 
so you can't have it both ways, right? You can't say, oh, I like the Sony A95L because it's hyper-realistic. It has all these extra yeah, 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 enhancements. Yeah. And then you go around, oh, this is more honest. No, that's BS, <laughs> right? Come on. The A95L is like that, right? It takes yeah, yeah. what it is and makes it better. Yeah. The UX did that. The X95L, maybe it didn't have enough zones. I don't know. It did not do that. So I'm yeah. going to be consistent. The reason I like the A95L and the S95C to a certain degree, but the A95L more than the S95C is the same reason I like the UX more than the X95L from Sony. Or a bit more A95L. punch, richness. Yes. Um, Vibrant, so, all of that. So Contrast. We had asked, so we'd asked also, which would you prefer all around? I know you asked me that in yesterday's video. Mm -hmm. For me, being a gamer, neither one of them are something I can really recommend for myself uh, as a hardcore gamer, PC gamer. Um, but I think we have a chance to really exhibit this. But Sony has really run away with upscaling. Um, yeah. Even very good 1080p content and even 4K content, the XR mm -hmm. Clear is doing something that we know we can't disable. So there's a level of clarity in all, all their content. But the majority of what we watch, even Netflix, Prime, Disney+, Plus, when it's not native 4K, the Sony's beating everything on the market. So when yeah. it comes into which one would you really buy, the X95L isn't the best at anything, but is so good at everything that mm -hmm. it's just hard not to go with it. So for me, the X95L would be the winner um, even uh -huh. though we weren't able to exhibit it. But if I was watching 4K HDR all the time, I probably would have gone for the UX. And I agree. I mean, I'm, I'm in that quandary right now. Uh, my friends are in the market for a 98H 100 inch. We talked about this, yep. Yeah. And even though I know the UAK comes out, came out with a 100 inch, and I know everything about the UAK, but I do know that he watches a lot of sports, yeah. golf, football, Sony X90L. Uh, similar price. I mean, maybe a little bit more expensive, but I saw the X90L at Costco t today. The 85. You said that, million. yeah. Yeah, and I was like, that really looks good. Yeah. Right? I'm like, you know, he'll be very happy with this because I know this content. He's not watching high-quality HDR. Yeah. Cable feed or direct TV or internet, YouTube TV. That's his kind of stuff. The Sony X90L, no-brainer for me, for him, because he's asking my recommendation. But if you know what you're getting, different ball game. But if you don't know what you're getting, oh, I have all this different content over the air content, all that stuff. Sony is consistent in that it meets yeah. its expectations. So that's why. And also, I think FOMO, we discovered um, with the shootout that at 65 inches, I know we wish the UX was 65 inches, but in reality, between Hisense, TCL, Sony, and Samsung, the land of the giants is where many LED will survive and yes. excel because even an average LED, we've seen this with the Sony uh, 80K. Some of them don't have local dimming and they still look great because of the massive size. Yeah. So I think mini LED is alive and well. It just needs to live at 85 and up. The and up is key. Yes. In the last three months, we had uh, 98, another 98 inch from TCL. I think in Europe, that's under 3,000. Yep. The U8K at 100 inches, and then TCL's already announcing that's going to send some more 100 inches by the end of the year or something like that. I mean, they are really hitting the market hard with these 100-inch, 90-inch sizes, and that's the right thing to do because after Phil Holland's presentation about size, right, so we're talking 85-inch, this new 50-degree angle, you know, from 85-inch TV, you're sitting seven feet now. Yeah. In, seven in, feet in, away. And the original part of, and we'll we'll do a video with Phil or talk about this separately, is that the old school way of thinking was like 15 feet back or at least 13 feet back from a 75 inch TV. And I know a lot of you guys ask us where they where you should sit, and that's obviously changed. But I wanted to get you on quick. You know, the beginning of this video is a comparison. I wasn't able to get a lot of footage, but I really want to get your thoughts because very few people have seen the UX. And even fewer people saw it at the shootout because the judges were already gone by the time the UX yeah. was out. Yeah. But for me, between Hisense and TCL, the future is extremely bright. Mm -hmm. Sony will always bring what they bring, and I think they'll always have their fans. And we are we love what they do. But the fact that the UX, I think if it was more affordable, yeah, and I think it's only so expensive because it is a luxury piece. Uh, quickly, Fomo, did you have a chance to take a look at the design at all? Oh, 
No, you saw I was running with just a camera. Okay. I, I was trying <laughs> to get that exposure right for you people, right? Yeah. But it, I didn't, I, I guess I'm so used to all TVs looking the same. So I didn't get to really check out, but uh -huh. I did hear someone complain that it was very heavy. So it's very good, heavy yeah. and the design is definitely an acquire. I like it. It's very aggressive looking, but I think most people like the more minimalist. They don't want to even see the badge on the TVs anymore. Ah. But um, I really like the UX. If it was, I will tell you right now, if it was better with gaming, meaning if it was even as good as the UAK and the U7K, I'd buy it in a heartbeat, call it a day. It is not, it's not really a gaming TV. The game bar is non existent. And I think it's more of a expensive prototype. Mm hmm. But as uh, for things to come, I was very impressed with it. I agree. And for those of you, when we say, oh, the Sony image processing is amazing, side by side, you really see the difference. In a vacuum, I thought the Samsung S95C looked great. Yeah. Then you put it next to the Sony, like, oh, okay, it's a little soft. And then people say, oh, you got a 77 inch, of course it's soft. The G3 also looked a little bit softer too. Yeah. So a little extra something that they put on it. There, there is a little extra something, and Sony deserves recognition for that for sure. Absolutely. And we talk about the processing always being, um, being there, but being yeah. market speak to some degree. Um, mm -hmm. It really, it really pulled away this year, which is you know we talked about maybe spending more time on their TVs as much as we want that instant gratification. The TVs they go against were the first. Look, look back to the shootout. The G3 and S95C were the first two TVs released this year. The A95L is the last TV released this year. I mean, yeah. it's almost not a fair advantage if you took an extra six months to keep it in the oven. Yeah. And for those of you thinking we're overhyping Sony, I was so hard on them last year about yeah. the bogus backlight master drive. I mean, they stopped it. Same technology. It's suddenly not backlight master drive this year. What they. Yeah. Took it away? No, it's the same backlight. It's still there, but, actually. But they realized that, yeah, it's just the it's mini LEDs and that it's all there. The yeah. problem is that they wasted that good, or rather than wasted, they destroyed that goodwill. Yeah. What we remember, the backlight master drive, they reintroduced it, and it just utterly, it became mud. And it was so, a different, well, it was a different signature, too. The backlight oh, yeah. master drive with the Z9D actually crushed wax. And so, but there were individual LEDs, not dipping yeah. zones, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, and we were thinking, wait, how could it be the same effect? So Sony is not always great with its hyperbole, yeah. but this year the XR Clear delivered. I sometimes Absolutely. it works, you know, sometimes it doesn't. So in closing, though, you're impressed with the UX. Are you excited from the future from Hisense from what if that's what they're looking to do? Absolutely, because honestly, I think the UX. They're experimenting on price. I think they could price this at thirty five hundred. I know they're going to yell at me. What thirty five hundred? Even at thirty five hundred, it's still. I'm assuming they're going to update the gaming processor, right, Brian? Yeah. Yep. You know, add the game bar, all of that. Like what we saw from the UAK, right? Update it for one hundred forty four hertz. They do that. Yep. Give it the pentonic chip. You give the, the full pentonic treatment at CES, and I know they will. They're listening. You guys, you're watching this. I know yep. you. Would I see you? <laughs> <laughs> He's like typing away. <laughs> At CES, I am so excited to see the UXL next year. Yeah, and that's what. We're, and what's the UXL looking for? What four thousand nits? Is that the the talk that they're? I'm I'm just looking for. Pro I see what Sony did. You're bright enough. Stop it. Focus yeah. on upscaling image Up processing. Image processing. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, reverse CES engineer Sony XR Clear. And I can't wait to see Hisense at CES. They impressed yes. me last year by the entire the, the equipment of doing mini LED across the board and the fact that they were at the shootout with the U8K. And it was great to see the UX. But FOMO, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts. Thank you. Check them out. Stop the FOMO. All right, brother. Have a good night. Good night, buddy. Take care.